uh, Privé, uh, Ciao, Bonsoir, Bienvenue, uh, welcome to the Let's Let Loose broadcast of Summit Edition 3. We're absolutely uh, stoked, very, very happy to be here. We welcome all of you along the listing, possibly for the first time. We encourage you to uh, get involved in the comments and let us know your thoughts. Um, and Christy, mate, it is very early, but I tell you what, the adrenaline is pumping through my veins right now. Odyssey, you're here with us as well. How are you, mate? Look, I'm barely. Uh, you can call me fucking Rain Man because I've got about as much brain function as Dustin Hoffman at the moment. But uh, I'm looking forward to this match. That uh, intro from Crispy got me bloody excited. I think it's going to be a killer of a game and I can't wait to see what unfolds. Uh, how about you, Shell? Yes, happy time zone from wherever you are. And uh, I'm just as excited as these guys to be here. This is uh, my first time doing anything like this and I cannot wait. Awesome. Uh, well done on your introduction, team. It, as I said, it is early here, and like a complete numpty, I forgot to unmute my mic. Uh, so I'll say hello again, um, but the team have done a great job in introducing themselves. Um, we'll, with the luck of the draw, the guys have just landed on a warfare mode on uh, Carantan Night, so uh, we'll introduce our streamers. Um, representing the 8th, we've got uh, Lieutenant Price. Um, for the 8th, I believe, playing in an infantry, uh, as an infantry perspective. Um, joining him at, or, at, on his team as well, we have uh, Losso. And on 9 May, um, our Russian account, the Russian counterparts, we have got... No, which one? We've got Vled for 9 May, also playing in an infantry role. Yeah. And finally, but not last but not least, we've got yeah. Xiaomi An as well. Uh, so it looks like the Russian side nine May are playing as the uh, the US and the eight. So yeah, them, yeah, them, yeah, them. As uh, the German, so uh, we'll sit back tight as they make their way up. What a great map for our first ever attempt at uh, well, streaming at such a high, high level. We have streamed before for you people that are tuning in for the very first time. We're not uh, completely inexperienced, but um, broadcasting internationally, getting quarantine as the first map. Shell, Oddie, you've got to be pretty happy uh, seeing that one pop up an OG map uh, for the third edition of Summit. Uh, it is pretty exciting. Uh, definitely a tough map, I think, for certain aspects. It can be a tough map for tanking, so let's hope that they uh, do well and good luck to them. Yeah, I think as an infantryman, you see Carantan, your eyes just light up. You know, it's, I think it's a game 99% of infantry players, uh, the map they want to play. Um, night time makes it a bit more interesting, as you said, it's going to be a bit difficult for the armour, moving through those tight corridors and whatnot. But, um, you know, I'm sure these teams are tight-knit units, they'll give their good, good armour support and um, should be a, a banger of a match. I'm, I can't wait. I saw a quick um, look, Crispy, of the map there. The um, Americans, sorry, the Germans have got a really good back-to-back -back there. If they can cap middle, that straight onto the next objective uh, right through the front door, so that could be very interesting. It'll be a big race to see who can capture that middle point. Yeah, absolutely. You definitely want your best drivers driving those transport trucks on that uh, on that mid push to try and get that uh, that upper hand. We've seen it so many times, and, and particularly in the Pav Cup that we did, where you know getting first at that midpoint plays a crucial role in being able to control the game. So, um, it'll be interesting to see uh, yeah how this plays out. Um, I think it's it's quite an even even race to the midpoint here. I don't think it favours one particular side too much. Um, so yeah, I think it's going to be all to play for here. Yeah, once you get to that midpoint, it's so congested there in the city. I couldn't be more happy with this uh, map layout. But uh, yeah, if 8th um, can uh, capture midpoint and get a roll on, it could be um, panic stations for uh, 9 May. But um, we know that they uh, they recently won the uh, Hell Let Loose Euro competition. I believe it's just called Hell. So um, they're not uh, the 8th aren't coming up against uh, amateurs here. They're, they're coming up against a strong team, so... Can't wait for this time to finish and get into the action. Agreed, agreed. I don't. It's fair to say we don't know too much about these sides, but uh, I know that um, the boys at the six have certainly come against Nine May and they've uh, given them a lot of uh, a lot of praise for the um, 
you know, for the way they play. So I'm really, really looking forward to this one. Um, you'll be pleased to know, Shell, we do have a tank perspective. So if Led is pushing up the, the, the right tank in the stage, yeah. I'm sure that would make you happy. Uh, what's your thoughts on this, on this map as a, as a tank map? Uh, it can get very congested when you're in the middle. Uh, it's a living hell for having satchels hiding in uh, courtyards and stuff waiting for you. So it'll be interesting to see how the tanks approach it and uh, whether they come from the outers or whether they go straight down the guts because sometimes it can be a bit risky going straight down the guts if you don't have your infi support. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so we can see that uh, the 8th have managed to get uh, the cap on here. So... Um, yeah, uh, Vled is pushing up in that light tank, but uh, the eighth looking like they've got they got there first and uh, are starting to get the cap on. Doesn't look like there's many nine May guys from the map there uh, in the strong point, um, so it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Having said that, I think they might just be contesting it again. Now, yeah, so. they are. There's a couple of good garrison setups there too. They've got a pretty deep defensive garrison placement. It will um, work to counter attack if they do lose midpoint. Talking about nine May here. Um, wonder, crispy, could we get a eighth see perspective and see if they get a map up and we can look at their yeah, garrison sure. setup? Sure, we'll switch to uh, to low side. For guys. Oh, getting out the machine gun already. Here, oh. comes, here comes the eye. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> How, no, crucial, how crucial of a role is the eye you got to play on this map, Odyssey? Oh. No, yeah, especially once you get more so into the city even more. Um, it's going to be, you know, very, very concentrated and um, devastating as we all know playing this map. Here comes suppression fire. I didn't see the other points actually at the start. Where are they? Are they sort of open, over in the um, south side in the open area or what are we sort of looking at? Uh, listeners, you'll soon understand this when I say I'm useless with north, south, east, west, but the um, 8th May uh, points are up the top of the map, bro. Oh no, they're uh, at the bottom, right at the bottom of the map. Okay. It looks like, didn't look like we had too much city fight and just that quick little glance uh, we had the there. Mid, um, yeah. Just the midpoint yeah. it appears to be, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we've just got uh, Lieutenant Price here as well for the 8th playing in a recon, so... Um, Back to my uh, my glory days as a yeah, as a, as a sniper. Too, so we're um, so uh, yeah, keen to see how they go here. Yeah, Playing with the FG42, absolutely love that gun. Um, yeah, particularly for this map as well. I think it's just well suited, uh, you know, a well suited sniper for the Germans. Um, just with that fire rate as well. So keen to see if they can get in and uh, cause some disruption behind enemy lines here. Three guns going. They want to get to that arty straight away, don't they? Yeah, you can just Probably hear him saying that there's three guns too. going for Nine May. So I think that's where Price Foundry is going to be knows. heading right now. In Looking at those points, um, it definitely changes it up. Like it, it can be a lot more tank focused, I believe, because most of the objectives are on that south side on the open side of the map. As you can see, see there. The oh, did you see they set up for the nodes there? Yeah. They already had barbed wire around it already. That's that is very efficient. Uh, yeah, eight, 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 eight minutes in. There's defences <laughs> up around the RE as well. Look at the barricades <laughs> and uh, oh, the nodes really in placed in a in, in a barbed wire square. If you that's, can, uh, uh, that's if you can, incredibly clever gameplay there. Um, sure. Using the, uh, yeah, the meta of the game to. You can go weapons hot on the people that are to, building uh, defences. Protect those nodes. That Slow outpost that going down would have alerted them yep. to the fact Moving that the sniper's in. there, but it doesn't matter too much because he's in. There's a set of nodes at the nodes guns as well. With barbed wire, or not barbed wire, sorry. He's uh, reporting the... Uh, oh, oh. oh, nice shot. Oh, no. <laughs> do you love that? He switches position in the gun. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and he's just... Oh. <laughs> A little bit of panic stations there, maybe. We'll switch back to uh, to nine May and see how they're going. Um, so Vlad's pushing up, approaching the uh, the midpoint now. Caps back on too. I'll go on the other way. Well, I think we'll say if um, eight are able to, sorry, no, if ninth are able to cap this midpoint, um, and then sort of get control of the high ground on the next point. Um, they're going to have, you know, all the, the high ground looking uh, out over the last point. It'll be basically impossible, I think, for AT to get out of there if they are able to cap it. Mm, mm, um, as I zoom out here, because as you know, you can set up AT guns, tanks on that on that mountain overlooking um, 
there's sort of the whole spawn area and the last point, and you basically, yeah, good luck getting out of there at that point. Mm. Interesting to see a spotter flare has gone up, so they're utilising their spotter still at midpoint rather than pushing up with the sniper. Honestly, one thing I cannot believe Igor, is how many freaking kings are on their map. Yeah, it's good to see. That is insane. Yeah. I don't believe how long the words are for like simple things that like the English <laughs> yeah. version. There's oh. so many letters involved. Cool, yeah. I almost spat out my coffee then. Well done, Hoddy. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, you said exactly what I was thinking. It's uh, So we're 10 minutes in and the, the midpoint is still yet to be capped. Are we, are we going to have another uh, 11th versus 6th hey, moment where you know we have a half hour contest over, over midpoint? I'd love to see that. that. That yeah. contest has gone back and forth four times. I've been counting yeah. in yeah. the last ten minutes. It's starting so. to favour nine May, and it's just gone back again to the eighth. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. We have got a real battle. Uh, uh, then, Metku Q, you see my tank? Wonder if this uh, seventy-six relative can make a difference. <laughs> yeah, you'd like to think. Then. Oh, uh, that's we'll, we'll switch over Там to uh, Lex, uh, uh, teammate, teammate Shelmian, who's just taken a, a, a rocket to the face. Oh. But he, uh, see how he goes. He's, uh, I believe he's in the, oh, in the point, good. just pushing in. He's so good, nice there. good garrison set up. Look at all around there. Uh, prepared for a, a cap. A bit conservative. Nothing in the... Um, well, you can't put anything in that midpoint yet. But... Mm. I like how well their OPs are spread out as well. Um, yep. You know, they're not all clustered together, so that's allowing them to keep that constant pressure on that midpoint. Um, hence, you know, which is which is preventing eighth, you know, getting a solid cap onto it. I'm just wondering with the way they set up their nodes so well in terms of defensive fortifications, have they started to fortify um, their second last objective? I'd be interested to see if they're going to go with a static defense if they lose the middle cap. We'll have to wait and find out. He comes that tank. Yeah, he he to 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 uh, he's up with Shelmian now. Stoy, stoy, Got that uh, that manpower in the in the point there. Uh, we've, uh, uh, they're trying to get a hit off. Yeah, they're trying to get a hit off on this uh, tank marker that they just saw before. Yep. We should hopefully have a nice tank battle on our hands here, Well, we can say. This is uh. Yeah, the tank's still there. This is Sakhal and AT territory. Stay here. Say again. This is uh, such uh, an AT then, territory for the tank, though. Yeah, it sure is. Uh, having all those uh, fences around you, the fact that so many people can hide behind those fences just to duck out straight away. And I've noticed lately a lot more people using the uh, mine tactic of putting mines on the road so that they can uh, hold you up enough to uh, be able to satchel you out. So. Speedy Panther, but Speedy Panther, sure. then, yeah, then Pantera. Like, Pantera. Um, oh, yeah, there we go. Here we go. The oh, first tank, oh, Summit Edition no. 3. This is the... Oh no, oh, they, the third shot was a track. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. They lost their cool. All they had to do was take their time with that one. Yeah. That was. They had a, they yep. had a perfect shot there. The, 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 uh, the other tank was already damaged. Medium damage was too. damaged and, and missed his shot. Yeah. That was smooth, smooth and fast. Light tank, oh, yeah. There's a panther. Oh, oh. So, so they had a panther yeah. that was already damaged, and then the 76, all they'd do is take their time and, and land their shot, and they rushed oh. it. And It's unfortunate for them. They should have had that. So midpoint's capped. Yeah, 13 minutes in. Midpoint uh, favours the eighth. Uh, we're looking at Lieutenant Price now, just taking on the Arty. Um, I, you know, I think he's played a crucial role there. We saw that uh, Arty coming down, bombarding them, um, and he's, uh, yeah, he's played a crucial role getting there so quickly. Um, how how important is that? You know, to get to that Arty so quickly. Um, you know, we've seen it so many times where you, you get three guns up and you, and you bombard that point, and no, it's, it's impossible for your be, infantry yeah, to get in there. Right there. So I think the eighth though. Price a lot of guns uh, are quiet, a lot of credit there for getting that yeah, cap on. Guns are silent right now. Yeah, that's early day meta. I guess we can Nicely call it done. early day now. I'd probably say about a year, year and a half ago. 
uh, in Oceania, at least we started to see that um, come into the fold of getting your recon down and taking out artillery a lot earlier because artillery, artillery sorry, became such a important uh, deal due to you guys, Oddy and uh, and Crispy the Eleventh, really started to push that through oh, I'm, 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 uh, in our part of the world, making sure that artillery got taken down because it can be so oh, damaging. So it's definitely helped them cap the midpoint. Yeah, thanks to our mad men in our talk. Oh, sorry, show you guys. Buddy monkey. Definitely agree with that one there. I've come up against you, 11th. Uh, even in pub matches, you guys are on point with that artillery every time, and it can make or break a point. It's crazy. Yeah, thanks to our mad men artillery, artillery, artillery monkey, and deadly dash there. <laughs> it's been a lot of time back there. They're absolute uh, legends and professionals. And, yeah, um, it's glad they're known for it. They deserve it. Um, as, he's, as he's been saying, the, it just creates, the artillery creates like basically impenetrable wolf infantry. You know, each round has a, what, I think 25 meter blast radius or something ridiculous. Yeah. Um, so three guns up, you know, good luck getting through there. It's, um, yeah, we got to view two crucial moments there on stream, which was great. Obviously the tank battle and then um, the Ardy being taken yeah. down. So, yeah. Three game. Good to see. Just trying to get a look at... Um... Nine maize garrison placements here. They've got a couple of blue zones up, which will keep that pressure on. Um, but I'm just hoping that we can see a bit more of the map at some stage. Got to be conservative with an hour and 14. You don't want to start pushing too early. We've talked about this kind of thing before, Oddie, but um, we've got new listeners uh, tuning in. You, you don't want to... Uh, Am I right, Steve? You agree with me, or do you don't want to be pushing and trying to make red zone garrisons doing um, throwing hail marys with this much time remaining? If you're in the position that you're in now, you've lost midpoint. What's your go-to? Oh, look, probably to the old start off, push up the up the guts. You know, have guys probing around on the flanks and whatnot, looking for weaknesses. Um, you know, we'll be keeping up that front line pressure, making sure they're not pushing through to our defensive zone, and then um. If they find, you know, a weakness or a good spot for their OP or whatnot, we'll probably send a few guys over there um, and, and try and sneak them in the back while we um, keep them busy in the front. Yeah, that blue-red sector control is going to be absolutely crucial now to both teams, making sure whoever wins that sort of micro battle right along that stretch between D and E uh, to see who can control that before a push comes from either side um, and making sure that You've got at least one squad roaming around in infantry looking for tanks um, that could uh, change the game as well. Yeah, absolutely. As you said, yeah, there's no point going for all of it, you know, those deep red zone garries and whatnot yet. Um, you always want to leave yourself, try and be unpredictable, leave your options, you know. As you said, leave that for when it gets, if, you, if it gets desperate towards the end of the game and then, um, you know, hopefully they're not expecting it as much. Yeah. Even flanks, uh, Shell, I wouldn't be pushing, or Crispy, I wouldn't be pushing too far out wide. I'd be looking to control uh, what we call the front door in Oceana, that, that, that especially what I talked about at the start of the match, the fact that it's a back-to-back -back cap. You want to really control, um, both teams want to control the, just, just the front door or what we call also um, going up the guts. You heard Odyssey say that before. Um, Shell, what are your thoughts there, or Crispy? You guys are being the privilege. Uh, I'm just trying to take it all in. This is the first yeah. time I've ever seen like a full on comp match. So trying to just yeah. take it all in and uh, see what their tactics are. Their um, this uh, squad has currently just found a tank and they've got a uh, AT. I think that's uh, going to try and take it out. Uh, rolling down the uh, roads there. Which is interesting. Agreed. I, I, I agree with the, uh, you know, ha having that, that force up the guts or holding that front door. So many times we see teams where they lose a point and they instantly think that they've got to start flanking to get red zones up straight away. Um, and they just allow the other team to walk straight through the front door and then push on to the next point. And we all know once, once we lose that fourth point or that second point, uh, it's very, very hard to recover from. So I think I think uh, Nine May are doing a good job of keeping them out at the moment. You can see on the, the map, um, I'll go to the lead. You can see that there's a big heavy presence um, up the guts and they're not flanking too much at the moment. There's a couple of garrisons on the blue zone um, on the flanks, but um, most of their infantry are pushing straight up the middle. And they're putting a recon plane right over that area, I think, that I was talking about. Or maybe not. Maybe it's a... Is it a supply drop? It's a supply drop. They're getting a new garrison up. Just controlling that blue-red zone. So, so speed, 
We'll head back to Loso, who I think is just on the defensive point at the moment with the MG. How how crucial of a of a role is you know having a good MG in placement uh, on that defensive point? I'll, uh, I'll throw it to you. He's taking a leaf out of the eleventh book here. He's bush book in. Um, so you know, you know, he knows his shit. So absolute legend. Um, but no, absolutely, like uh, a good MG in a good position. You know, it can it can lock down an entire sector, especially with MG forty two. You know, it's spraying a wall of lead at you. Um, so yeah, like it, it can be, it can save a point easily. Um, and it can make it very difficult for any um, soft targets to get through. What are your thoughts on a Frankie? <laughs> Yeah, I remember having this conversation. I don't know if it was in-game or if it was on the last podcast, but Machine Gun is such an interesting role. No, it was. Uh, I had a chat with Merck. Uh, you'll hear it in the podcast, um, new listeners, if you um, aren't subscribed to the Lads Let Loose main channel. We do a podcast uh, once a fortnight. I was talking to Merck yesterday, uh, interviewed Sharpie and Mr. House from that clan, and we were talking about favourite roles and least favourite roles, and I think thing. one of them said, uh, from memory, Machine Gunner is one of their least favourite roles, and I had to agree with them. It's um, you're very, I don't know, maybe dull, but it's such a useful one as well. We've got a couple of boys in TFMC, uh, which is my clan, new listeners that I'm involved with, um, who just love the role, and they can oh, set themselves no, up in a lovely position, and it's got to be positioned so perfectly uh, to get it right, because once you start to stand out, uh, excuse the expression, like a dog's penis uh, when it's on the heat, because everyone can just hear you, everyone can see your muzzle flare, and you go down, so you've got to get to a really good spot, but once yeah, you do, you can, you can benefit your side defensively and offensively so well with suppressive fire, it impacts the way that the players yeah, see the game, the way that they move, so, yeah man, I, I it's so they very underrated, just like recon, it's a really underrated role. Um, but it can be oh, extremely boots, boots. damaging. God dang it. He, uh, I agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Right, I gotta move the OP. Great analysis. <laughs> Had me laughing there for a bit, Frankie, with the old uh, dog's penis. <laughs> for... <laughs> I'm gonna move the OP hard south. Of the uh, summit listeners, this is what you're in for. You've got a little bit of Australian humor with some serious analysis along the way. We're, uh, we're stoked to be here and we hope you're enjoying it. Absolutely. So we didn't really I'll get the chance see the to, Russian uh... translation for that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we didn't really get chance to uh, to chat too much. Uh, just while we're obviously um, there's uh, it's quieting down a little bit on the uh, on the battlefield now. We'll uh, we didn't really get chance to meet our teams too much. Um, Frank, I know we we reached out to some of the teams earlier on in the week um, just to find out a bit more about them, and uh, they did some some awesome wraps. Um, did you want to go into a bit more detail? We'll start with uh, Nine May. Um, yeah, the uh, the Russian clan. Yeah, they're the ones that I, I nine May that I read the most. And that's no offence to Eighth, uh, just because the extensive write up that they gave, that the way that they've all come together. They um, there's some founding members that live that's in Volgograd. I'm probably saying that really wrong. I might genuinely apologise. I'm, I'm not being a smartass. Um, they they talked about how they uh, invested in terms of their knowledge of the map. Some of them live uh, in the area that's featured in Stalingrad on that map. It's um, a really interesting perspective to read and to hear about and, and just the experience that they've got in the clan. Um, Shelmian there and a couple of others were listed as the founding members of, of the clan and um, they won that the, the Hell competition, which is the, the Euro-based um, Let Loose competitive competition that I know KRC um are involved with uh, as well as, as i'm sure many others are so um really strong group and and even though you know we may not have heard about them so much in what we would call i guess the western world um they're coming in with a lot of experience and, and sixth um, uh, lobby who's a member of our lads that lose podcast has said uh they've come up against them and, and they're really strong too so i'm i've been excited all week to um not only interview merc but then also do this map and, uh, match sorry and watch um, how they do it over at, uh, at Nine May. Uh, Odyssey and, and Shell, have you guys done a done the read up of what the eighth sent through to us? I was going through the ninth there myself, um, but yeah, look, I can give a quick read up of the eighth as well. Um, I was just looking at ninth quickly and noticed that they commented on their artillery um, and that you know it's one of their strengths, which is something you know the eleventh also um, yeah. pride ourselves on and. Yeah, they said um, it, it was a big factor in, you know, their leadership. Um, one of their main leaders, I think, Zaloy, um, uh, you know, early in the game was doing a lot of um, 
work on, you know, what's the best methods for artillery and defense, and um, that went a long way to helping them win um, hell, so that's interesting to see. Um, as for the 8th, I mean, they held the 7th to an hour-long game in their first scrimmage um, as just the 8th. So, you know, the 7th, as we know, and no joke, they're one of the best teams, if not the best team. I mean, they, they are the best team um, yeah. so far throughout the history of, of console or Hell Let Loose, as far as I'm aware. Uh, um, which is, yeah, that's, that's unreal. Um, they said some of their, their key players are Keystone, Dane, um, Bedra, J-Dog. Um, yeah, they're their TPL All-Stars, and I know, so we'll have to keep an eye on these fellas and see, um, and these players and see how they go. Um, yeah, what about you? How about you, Shell? Yeah, I was just reading up about it as well, um, that, you know, they were originally uh, four of them that uh, were with another unit and broke away and began the eighth, which seems to be Stop. how a lot of the clans uh, are created these days, obviously, because you've already got your well-established ones, so bringing in something new and they reckon that they're a pretty balanced team, that they're not super efficient at one thing, uh, at just one thing. They're, they're pretty well all-rounders um, and obviously they're pretty new to competitions and uh, finding their identity so um, one thing that I was also reading about 9 May that I found really interesting is that one of their clan founders actually discovered that there was an inconsistency on the uh, Stalingrad map and they uh, called it out on Reddit and got the attention of the developers yeah, and actually got one of the uh, street names changed. So that's pretty interesting. Yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, it was uh, something. Pretty cool. Uh, it was something about Hiroshima or something, wasn't it, Crispy? Yeah, I believe so. Yep. Yeah, yeah. They, the was, uh, they changed the name or, or gave the correct, accurate um, road name, and uh, yeah, apparently the developers changed it for them. So um, yeah, it was pretty cool that they that they were you know involved with that. So um, look, just as we say that, uh, nine may are actually uh, looking like they're going to cap this point back here. Um, just as we were talking, you would have briefly saw the map. Um, they knocked a lot. I of saw the an airhead. Yeah, they I knocked saw an airhead going in the sea. Who was down. that? Uh, I think it was from nine may. Um, yeah, well, yeah. They knocked the, the garrison on point from the 8th, uh, and you could see all those OPs lighting up. So, uh, half an hour in, or just under half an hour in, and I may take there, control back of the 3rd of the, uh, oh, um, um, what, uh, what do we think so far? I know there's still an hour an hour to go, plenty of time, but uh, if you had to choose a winner, I'd see, um, you know, based on what you've seen so far, what's it, what, what, who are you predicting? Green oh, it's, it's a hard one. I mean, it's been so close so far. Um, I'd say the, look, the arm is probably more than likely going to decide it, in my opinion. Um, looking at this, um, look at those position of those points. I'm going to be favouring 9 May. Shell, where, where are you going? Oh, dude, don't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> Watching, as I said, this is my first competition that I've ever watched, sort of, um, at this level, and it's actually incredible to see, um, just watching the back and forth and the fact that they held this middle point and no one capped it for so long, uh, it's pretty insane to see for me, um, looking at, you know, their setups and stuff like that, they've actually pushed eight quite far back, having that armour on that middle point is uh, definitely going nine May's way, that's for sure, having all the infantry supporting it, as you saw before. Um, yeah, I'm, it could go either way. There's still, you know, an hour left, and uh, we all know how that, even the last half an hour can go, so mm, we'll see. Mm, agreed, and and I think what nine May are doing well here, as you said, that, that armor's just sitting on the point now. You know, they've got control of the third point, they're not rushing off of it, they're, they're waiting to set up. They're going to get some garrisons placed. You can see a squad pushing up to the fourth but point there. So, um, I imagine they're going to try and get some some form of forward placing garrison up there, um, and, uh, and and really really take their time before they push off. And we saw in the in the Pav Cup, you know, teams like Roths and the Six did this so well. They didn't necessarily just rush straight off the point. They, they made sure that they were all ready to push, um, and then uh, and then you know, 
uh, create a combined assault. Um, Frankie, where are, where are you sitting at the moment? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting in the fact that, and Od I bet you Odyssey is thinking the same thing, you, uh, you missed the greatest opportunity there for a good joke, or a really bad joke. So they're rushing off into the distance, I was going to say. Oh my rushing, god! Rushing into the... You like that shell? But Do you like it? <laughs> I thought you were going to hit something else completely there, Frankie. Maybe it's me with a bit of dark humour, but going on to that um, street named Hiroshima, I thought it was going to be because someone looked at the map of Stalingrad and thought it was Hiroshima. <laughs> no, Very no, explosive no. there. <laughs> oh, shell! Yeah, he's, he's oh, sorry, guys. It's all good, good fun. Um, no. Nah. Crispy, I'm uh, I'm going to say that my pick for the winner are the people that are watching this right now this because this is I an love. absolutely awesome match for our first no, broadcast of Summer no, Edition no, 3. No, the fact that we're still contesting no, midpoint with a no, half an hour gone, it's exactly no, what no, you want to no, see. No, we're seeing really no, good players. I'm I'm learning no, when no, I watched um, that machine gunner before. I forgot the bloke's name. Is it Shelmian, maybe? Uh, uh, for 9 May? Or... Oh, they're only, they're only able to fire yeah, I can't remember, but I'm just, I'm learning when I'm yeah. watching, you know, the patience that they're showing, the positioning of the tank. I'm, you know, getting a little yeah, bit sweaty, uh, you know, metaphorically, not literally, um, just with the way that this, this is panning out. I've got to go and play a clan war after this, and I think I'm going to be tired from watching this yeah. I don't know how I'm going to actually play. It's, it's sensational. It's awesome to watch. So I've got no idea who's going to win. Both teams deserve to win with the way that they've been playing. Um, and we're just going to have to see how it unfolds. Is that a decent answer for you, Crispy? I think that's a fair analogy, mate. Yeah, it's uh, it's a very hard to choose. Uh, and, and even the community, I think, you know, looking on the Summit uh, Discord, um, the, the votes went up earlier on in the week for this one, and they were very, very close. So 41% of the votes uh, favoured the 8th. And 59% of the votes uh, favoured 9 May, so um, pretty close um, in terms of in terms of who who they think that you know the, the community think are going to win this one as well. So I'm uh, yeah just stoked that we've got a really good competitive game for our first uh, first game that we're we're covering. So it certainly hasn't disappointed so far. Definitely uh, agree with Frankie in the fact that you know watching this gameplay and watching them and. Uh, all learning. Um, I was watching the tank before and watching the fact that they utilize their infantry pings in the tank, which I it like as much as it has occurred to me, like it also hasn't because they were actually pinging the infantry behind them in amongst west. all the uh friendlies that they had around, which was uh pretty incredible to see. That's uh one way of dealing with it in a armor. And I'm, I'm definitely picking up a lot of uh, tips and hints that uh, could definitely be useful in the future for myself as well. Yeah, absolutely. Poor. Uh, Lasso, uh, it was Lasso. Absolutely... It was Lasso, by the way. Oh, yep. Just yeah, got yeah, it was him. Smacked by uh, yeah. artillery there, but Price is there to oh, save the day again, and it looks like he's taking the middle of the gun. Me. Oh, I got him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can hear the joy in his voice there. I well. got him. <laughs> I think um, something that, you know, Shell's sort of touched on um, for the few viewers who, you know, haven't been involved in a competitive match or, or whatnot, um, it doesn't really show as much in the stream, but not only the teamwork, but the speed of the gameplay is so different from a normal match. Um, you know, we've had so many people, as, as I'm sure you know, a lot of the, all the clans have that have come into the clan, play their first clan competitive match and go, wow, I did not realise the speed of it and just how on point you need to be. Um... You know, it's unreal, and that's what I think a lot of people do enjoy about it. The teamwork, um, the, the speed of it, you know, everyone working together. It is very similar to, to playing a, in, like, a, a team-related sport like rugby or soccer or, or something like that. Um, NFL, whatever you want to call it, and I think, yeah, that's what I enjoy a lot about it. Um, how about yourself, Frankie? Yeah, man, you couldn't have said it any better. Like, once you elevate to a proper competitive match, uh, you know, excuse the expression, to, you move up to sort of that elite level of playing this game, where you're playing with people that have been playing it since day one, or they've just been putting a lot of hours in there and, and investing time into the, I guess, what we call the meta of the game. Oh, good spotter. Um, Flair going up there too. Um, that's when you start seeing how fast the game goes, and uh, there'll be player there'll be players watching this that aren't in a clan. There'll be players watching this who are tuning in and um, have maybe only played I don't know less than twenty hours of the game, 
um, and they'll be watching it thinking, yeah, I could do this. And, and you, you see it all the time. You get those players that come in, join a clan, and they, they talk it up a little bit and say, yep, I'm going to be great. Or I think I'm going to be okay. And then they play that first clan war. And, and you, if you could get a photo of them, it would be the thousand yard stare just going, holy crap, what have I just watched? And so I, I hope it is translating through our footage here of how quickly the game moves. And if it doesn't, just um, trust us. Uh, it is going fast. You can see now that garrison behind the, the midpoint's gone hot. Um, so there's definitely some pressure back there too. So you've just got to have your eye on everything and making sure that your squad leads are focusing on their jobs but keeping a holistic perspective. And I think that's why at the moment why uh, Nine May are retaining that possession of midpoint, especially with this tank here. But there's someone creeping up being cheeky. <laughs> It's, uh, it's, so, it's such yeah, a that's where I think we are. Sorry, tanks, is particularly in that, yeah. that built-up, you know, town and at night as well. It's uh, it's uh, an AT's dream to, uh, to 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 be able to crawl up to you there. So, really good. Uh, tank nightmare. Tank, yeah, really good tank commanding there by uh, Vled, who uh, who managed to spot him and, and notify well, his gunner just in time. Uh, we'll swap back over story? to uh, to Losso and see how they're going. Just to touch on the, uh, that, yeah, that art is uh, absolutely raining down on them at the moment. Just to um, to touch on the fact <laughs> about joining, they're, they're pinned in, aren't they, at the moment? They, they're really relying on Price to, uh, to take care of this, this artillery. We'll switch over to him and see how he's going. Um, I was going to say, the thing is, we've all been there, haven't we, where you're just sitting and hoping that that artillery mm -hmm. doesn't move that 20 metres to yeah. where you are. Because once that arty gets a kill, they'll be like, all right, I've got one, so I'm going to stay, keep pumping it there. So you've got to stay out of their way and make yeah. them think that you're not there. You've got to play that game. What were you going to say, Crispy? Uh, yeah, just to touch back on, uh, you know, people that may be watching this that aren't part of the clan or have only just picked the game up. Uh, and if you are looking for a clan, um, definitely recommend, you know, jumping into the Lads Let Loose Discord. Um, the link will be in the description. Um, you know, there's many clans from, from uh, we've got quite a few international guests in there now, so uh, there is a role that you can select to, that you're looking for a clan, and, um, yeah, these guys you know, by all means, get some game time in with, with you know, some guys in your your time zone or wherever you're from. Um, get a real good feel for them. I think it's important not to rush into a clan, and you've got to join a clan that you feel comfortable with. Um, Russian. <laughs> Russian. Russian. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, I missed. I missed the joke for the second time. It's too early, Frank, for jokes. It's too early. <laughs> Bring out all the dad jokes. But uh, yeah, it certainly does change the game for you. And um, you know, as as we saw there, you know, a thirteen minute contest over midpoint. You just don't seem to get that in in pub matches. So um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I I highly recommend it if uh, if you are new to the game. Yeah, I'll back that up too and just sort of say it, whether you are in a clan or whether you're not in a clan, I'm, I take a lot of pride in our lads let loose Discord. We've got a really strong team uh, working uh, for us totally for free and, and, and we have a lot of fun doing it. So if you want to join in our Discord, we, we pride ourselves on it being a place that doesn't have any toxicity and if um, silly stuff does pop up, we're pretty quick on kicking people and uh, putting people on timeouts and, and stuff like that, uh, much sometimes to our detriment, but I take a lot of pride in the work that are being done over there. So the link is in the description if you'd like to be part of our community. Going forward, it'll be the number one place to find out what matches we're streaming and um, getting updates there, uh, in addition, obviously, to joining the Summit Discord, which would be the first place you'd want to go, but yeah. definitely recommend us um, as well, because we do a lot of stuff over there. We've got the podcast, we do our shorts of the week, uh, we send out prizes to the people who win, the short of the week, if we ever got an international winner, that would be very interesting, but I'm sure we'd uh, <laughs> tackle it um, respectfully. So, yeah, definitely that. Um, one one question before we move on. I don't know if Shell knows this. Shell, what do you call a soldier that's running around with a shovel? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't want to know. You call them Because I know it's going to be terrible. <laughs> what do you call a soldier running around without a shovel? Douglas. 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 Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ooh, a bit of fortifications going up here. I just want to also touch on the whole uh, clan thing. Um, coming from my perspective, uh, uh, I was part of a clan and I am no longer. Um, but within saying that, I also have the fact that 
I am still friends with a lot of people in different clans, so I'm friends with people in Roths, in TFMC, in the 11th, and I know that for a fact, like, I'm always welcome in any of their games, and mm. always welcome to jump in a squad with them, so even if you decide not to go with a clan, like, just know that those clans are still welcoming for people, whether you have a clan or not, and even if you're in a different clan, that's the, uh, I think the best thing about this community as well. Yeah, agreed. We've got a section, Crispy, don't we, called uh, T17 Tags. You can go in there. You can any of the players that uh, you want, and you can join in. We're, all, we're always welcoming to take people in. And, um, just uh, embrace the community, get to know each other, and, and have a bit of fun, and get rid of the silly stuff. Build bridges and break bread and have a good chat. And this tank is still on the point. Yeah. It has yeah. not moved. Uh, I mean, medium. Medium. <laughs> it's even more incredible. I think it's a credit to, um, you can see here, Shelmy and, and uh, Vled working in tandem together. That infantry are just patrolling around and just keeping that tank, you know, in, in a, in a advantageous position. Nothing's really, apart from the one that uh, sneaked through the cracks, um, Nothing has really got close to them. Um, and I think that's a testament to the infantry that's running around and mopping up anything that's coming in at the moment. There is Absolutely. a tank moving up though there. Sorry. No, I was going to say, just keep it short, I was going to say, um, absolutely, like, I can't believe they haven't been taken out by a heavy yet, so, as you said, a testament to, to the team for keeping the heavies off the, off the midpoint, however they're doing that, whether it's infantry or other tanks or whatnot, because... Yeah, it's not often you see a, a medium sitting up this long in a competitive match. Absolutely, absolutely. They're currently just waiting for a tank to come down that uh, middle railway road, though, uh, of the tank pings that they're seeing on the map. Uh, it's all Anyone? the weight game at the moment for this armor. It's been a very uh, translating that language. Yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to be able to, you know, understand what they're Assuming saying. Assuming it's just defending or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been a very, you know, both sides very uh, sort of stagnant at the moment. Um, just neither one wanting to move too much and give up that position. You know, Losso's been here for pretty much the same time that Vled has been in the yeah. on, on on that point. So they're really just holding every avenue at the moment, and um, neither team sort of really going, you know, pushing too far off. I really like the defensive patience, Odyssey. Do you? Do you like the fact that they're sitting back being conservative? I do, and this is what I think, you know, infantry, look at this, they're going to have a very hard time making any inroads here. Look at the defense they've built up and the positioning the MGs have got. It's where you need your armor or a combined push, armor, artillery. Artillery to soften them up, armor to push through that barbed wire and whatnot or, or break their hardened positions. Um, yeah, so it's just a matter of um, getting that up there, I think, because, yeah, I don't think the infantry are going to get through. They're too well prepared. Um, yeah. What do you like about it, Frankie? Well, I was just going to say, you know, we, we've got a lot of people that are meeting us for the first time. If we want to talk about who we are uh, and the way that this is set up right now, uh, I'm primarily main, uh, I think is the term, as an engineer. I'd love to say that I'd go full Rambo and get in there and get my satchel down to break down these barbed wire fences. But the fact that even if I tried to get close, they've got such a, a line of infantry here holding up um, with Losso primarily on his on his machine gun, that's not going to happen. We've got Odyssey with us who is, is by far one of the best shooters that I've played with and I've learned so much from him um, and, and I don't know really if I'd call him his main as a squad lead anymore uh, because he can pretty much play anything and then we've got Crispy who's also uh, these days main as a squad lead and Shell as a tank. But if you're attacking this position and they've set up so, so well. Are you waiting for a tank to come up and help you? Or is there something else that could be done here from the um, the, uh, the nine, nine May perspective to break through this line? Who was that for? <laughs> you, bros. You. Oh, oh, you oh, I thought you said shelves are in my bad, mate. <laughs> 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 Look, um... I think based on the setup, look, you're constantly going to be trying putting pressure on them. I'd probably be creating some sort of um, safe zone for our tanks to move up in, as said. Um, move the heavy up there or whatnot, or get some tank in. Um, be prepared to move in with some smoke, some arty, some good shit, because as you said, they've got the corner of the map locked down, they've got the barbed wire set up. Um, you know, an airhead's probably going to be spotted based on the position of the map. You know, you got there's not really too many places you can sneak one in. 
Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd be waiting for that sort of that armor support for this situation here myself. Yeah, so. At least command what about you, Crispy? You're a, you're an attacking slash sort of flex squad leader now. Yeah, I told you. Uh, yeah, I've kind of dabbled in both, um, oh, yeah. sort of, you know, defense yeah, and offense, but I'd say yeah. my, probably my <laughs> strength would be game, more of the defense yeah. side. Um, so I, I don't think, have a lot of kills, really. I guess I, I could probably touch on the... what, you know, how, how Brian May are protecting that tank at the moment. <laughs> yeah. And I think, as I, as I mentioned, you know, credit to the infantry um, yeah. patrolling around. Yeah. And I, I think one thing I haven't noticed, and, and I may have missed it as we're sort of going the through the streams, but the use of those. AP mines and AT mines as well, just to really create choke yeah. points and funnel points. So that tank's going to be really, really protected then, um, you know, in the event that, you know, he can sit on that point like we've seen. Um, and to take that point back, you know, you're going to have to move up a, a, another tank or uh, infantry to take it out. So if, you, if they're already aware of the tank and, and they've got to be careful where they push from, you know, that the added bonus of AT mines or AP mines are going to you know, definitely aid in defending that point. And it's going to give them more to think about and uh, potentially push them into positions that allows that defensive tank uh, to ah, take well. that, uh, you know, that, that offense out. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just giggling because uh, I'm just watching this tank try and get over the train carriages. So <laughs> I've never seen that. anyone yeah. try and yeah. get over train carriages. Yeah, uh, that's, 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 yeah. They uh, gave up on that idea no, pretty quickly. Um, I just want to also mention that this just shows and attests to the fact that defense is a massive, massive part of the game. I've noticed lately in pub games that no one wants to sit on defense when defense is probably just as, if not more important than your offense because at the you know if you don't hold off those people, you're gonna lose that that point and. Um, yeah, it just attests to how important defense is and the fact that, you know, people should probably be a bit more focused on their defense rather than just attacking all the time. Absolutely. As a, like, mainly offensive squad leader, we can't do our jobs if, if defense, you know, if we don't have a good defensive team. Like, so, basically, as you said, it's basically the most important point. If you've got your defense and they're good and they're, they're holding still, well, then you can go do your offense. And by doing your offense, you can then take pressure off the defense as well if you're causing, you know, the other team to have to pull people back to defend more. So it's really as everything's about teamwork and in tandem, but the defense really is the core. If your defense isn't holding up, you can't really do anything else. So it's a big shout out to obviously our defense boys doing their job. And, you know, whenever your team's defense, you know, as nine May's doing now, it makes everything um, a, lot, a lot easier and takes a lot of stress off the rest of the team. Yeah, they're frustrating them. That's all they're doing right now. They're literally sitting back. Well, they're not sitting back. They're active, um, but they're, they're frustrating the offense. And you build your platform from a strong defense. And Nine May, uh, unfortunately for the eighth, are doing that extremely well right now. It makes me think, Frank. Um, do you think that they've maybe because you know each team's different and each commander and then whatever? Do you think maybe they're just going for the three-two? Just you know, hold it out three-two or. Because they don't seem to you know, they're pushing too much. They are being active, as you said, but maybe they're just like, oh, well, look, we'll just go for the three-two, lock it down, won't worry about going for like a five-zero. Or, or what do you think? Well, just, this is the best way. part about us getting to stream this and being the broadcast partners of Summit Edition Three. Yeah. We're going to oh, now start painting pictures of what these different yeah. team strengths are, and if the match continues like this and goes all the way through to a three-two victory for Nine May then they are definitely going to start earning a reputation as being a conservative but a very clever mm. and patient um, yeah, defensive yeah. side. I remember very back early in the day, I don't know if it's a dirty word to say this, but there's another competition called TPL, um, which we don't need to get into too much, but there's a team involved in TPL uh, about two years ago called KRC. They received a very similar reputation. They would cap mid and they would sit back and defend and they would only attack when everything like everything aligned whereas there are other teams that will throw themselves into attack and maybe take a little bit of a gamble here and there um and i don't think that changes the interest level in the match i'll happily sit and watch a 3-2 conservative 90 minute you know absolute sweat fest uh as much as i'll sit back and watch a half an hour 5-0 in fact i'd probably enjoy the conservative side a little bit more because i'm a bit of a hell at loose nerd so um if they sit back and they want to do this for the next you know whatever time is left remaining crispy I'm good with that. What do you think? 
Uh, okay. Interesting you say that, Frank. I was just about to say yeah, I wonder if they the uh, eighth is defense. starting to contest oh, midpoint no. again. I've just right. had a quick brief yeah, yeah. on the map, and they've got three red zones up. Um, uh, one behind the point, which locked out. Another one that's oh, yeah. just locked out to the north, uh, and then one open one to the south. But they're starting to get the cap on here. Um, so let's see. Let's transition back to Nine May. Um, Vlad is making his way back into the tank, so we'll see how they can hold out here. But uh, what an absolute cracker of a match this is. That's one of the risks. I mean, you know, each defensive or offensive have their um, play style, have their, you know, pluses and, and minuses. Um, it's one of the risks if you go defensive. You know, the other team's going to be throwing everything they can at you, trying, you know, they may get frustrated or they may, um, you know, hit you something you haven't seen before. And um, you can either put the pressure on them or, you know, you could sort of let yourself get um, stagnant in defense and maybe get choked out a bit, which may or may not happen here. But this is a. Sorry. Yeah, that tank 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 that's, two, two that's what Oddie's talking about, though. Two yeah, they got two. They got two. Two complacent. That's massive from Vled. But well done. It's a, nice. a weird tank play. Not w weird, but maybe it's something to do with non-oceanic clans. I know we would probably favour heavy tanks in most cases. There seems to be a lot of medium tanks in play, um, and they're playing it well. I've been saying that, um, you know, if you're a bit uh, low on fuel, it's probably better to get out the, which, um, you know, you were playing in player matches previously. I've, I've, I've discovered this as well. Um, oh, Sammy! Oh, no. Oh! oh shit! Oh. Sorry, that's that saved. <laughs> no, no, you're fine. <laughs> Are you sure? I, I, I feel that having um, you know, two mediums on the, uh, on the map rather than a heavy can actually sometimes be of great benefit because then you're actually able to sort of, um, you know, tag team them with the two mediums rather than focusing one on the heavy just to lose a heavy because, you know, it, being a... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, being a you know in a tank crew that is one of the worst fears is the fact that you know you're gonna blow that tank up you're gonna get like absolutely obliterated and it's all for nothing and you lose so much so much fuel losing a heavy whereas you know having those two mediums yeah you're a little bit more vulnerable and you've got to play it a little bit safer but it can be more beneficial having two mediums on a uh, map mm. rather than mm. just one heavy well that's why that it's so lot. interesting so yeah, i saw ahead. that a lot Oddie. no no i saw that a lot just on what you both are saying um especially in terms of maybe it is a northern hemisphere strategy um we versed 11 sorry we tfmc versed 11 pz in the final of the valley um oh. summit edition 2 last year and we saw a lot of uh, medium tanks coming through rather than heavies and unfortunately on the day it was Utah Beach, it didn't work in their favour, we took them down rather quickly but I think what they were trying to do, uh, 11PZ, was exactly what Shell was talking about, having that strong coordination between two uh, lighter tanks rather than just one heavy uh, and trying to make that difference. It didn't work for them on the day but you can see that it would work if the coordination and the other team weren't ready for it, um, Crispy. Losso is just carving up with this burst fire on the machine gun. He's uh, he's absolutely smashing it at the moment and really holding that uh, that west side there. Um, I just want to give a big shout out there to uh, to Vled with that uh, that tank battle. He that crew literally single handedly just saved that point there. They took out those two PZ fours, uh, and the second they did that, they uh, started capping and defending back again. So massive uh, massive uh, moment there for Vled and Nine May. Uh, I think they have the uh, that medium to thank it. Yeah, I can already imagine if Hilsey was why. here right now, and, and okay, new listeners, new audience, uh, you'll meet uh, Hilsey on our next broadcast. I'm sure he's just away at the moment with his own clan. They had a meet up over the weekend, but he'd be living for that kind of uh, encounter uh, with those tanks there, just seeing the um, the micro battles coming into play. It's, uh, you couldn't ask for better footage. It's the yeah, stuff dreams like are made of. And, uh, look, uh, as, as we say that again, this, the eighth are starting to cap and contest the midpoint <laughs> again. So. Are we going to see another change? Uh, I think Vled's tank crew are down. Uh, they got taken out shortly after, so they're ba yeah, they are. They're making their way back up uh, to the point. And uh, as I said, yeah, eighth are starting to contest the point again. It's uh, it certainly hasn't disappointed this game at all.
I reckon. Do you reckon um, you know, it'd be worth clipping play of the game at the, unless something else more impressive pops up? The um, that Sherman of Floyd taking out um, the two the two PZ fours. Oh. Mm -hmm. Without a doubt, that is the the play of the game so far. Um, yeah, in my opinion, I think that you know, as I said, the the, the fact that he took those out, they were clearly adding a lot of uh, pressure and weight onto that point, and um, just awesome positioning coming up behind them, taking them both out, and um, you know, saving the point essentially. I've got a feeling Aether are going to cap back. I, I, is, is anyone else there? Like, I think... Yeah. I don't know how well Nine may have prepared if they do cap back. This could get very interesting. If eight get this, we could see them start to roll on on the fourth pretty quickly. I, I, I haven't seen the map in a while. If those, gar if those red zones are still up, those three red zones are still up, they're in a very, very strong position here. So um, yeah. this will be interesting to see how it plays out. We'll, we'll switch over to, uh, to eighth again and just see how they... Now we'll switch over to Loso. I'm not sure if he's going to start pushing up or if he's going to hold the defensive uh, Let's have a quick look. So he's still in that position there, just holding that west side. Do we know how many tank crews each side actually has up? Like, are they actually running three tank crews a side? Or, you know, they're running two or... Sure, I don't know if sure. I've seen three up at, at any one point. I know that Nine May at least has two. Uh, I haven't seen from the eight side. Um, but also, I did have a look at the map a couple of times when the eights have brought it up, and they've actually got like blue dots all around that middle zone, every direction. So they're definitely putting the pressure on that middle uh, cap zone. So. It's a shame we don't have an eighth uh, attacking perspective because we've got the sniper and we've got the defensive machine gun. I'd love to see what they're getting up to in attack. Um, credit to uh, Nine May again. They've defended and, and uh, yeah. warned off that, uh, that attack. So um, just in time for Vled to make it to the, to the midpoint here. So that's going to certainly aid the defensive uh, defensive squads. Um, once, once he arrives. See what he did in the medium. I can't wait to see what he does in a heavy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Agreed. Not gonna lie, I am uh, loving the fact that we have at least one armor perspective. It makes my day. It's so good. Hey? Very happy. <laughs> Even as an infantryman, I think you can appreciate just the work armor do, and it's great to see a great armor play. Like I think everyone, it's yeah, it's awesome to see it. I'm sure um, it's only even better for you as a tanker oh, shell. I am very much of the idea that I think at least once in your clan's life you should do a mix-up clan night, and that is put all your infantrymen into re like into recons and tanks, and do the opposite. Put your tanks in infantry because honestly, it gives everyone a whole new appreciation for other roles and what you go through on a clan night, it is uh, definitely an eye-opener and I cannot recommend that enough for your clans as just a fuck around night of mixing things up and giving everyone a better appreciation of how hard it can be in those positions on a clan night. Shell, I, uh, I don't think you understand my ability to go from stationary in a tank to flipping the bastard on its roof, so... <laughs> oh, that's the fun of it, though, man. That's the fun of it. The amount of times that I've hit a goddamn hay bale and flipped a tank is ridiculous. Shell is about to take a Gary here, so this could change... Uh... This space in a few minutes, Shell's got one up and he's taken one down. Sorry, Oddie. It's one of those red zones that okay. she's taken out there, so, yep. Yeah. They're starting to lose again the points. So eighth, I, yeah, I'd love to, as you said, Frank, love to see a, an offensive perspective of the eighth, um, just to see where they're pushing from. But um, with that take out of the garrison, it might slow things down. Yeah, I was just going to say just on the shell's point, absolutely. It's um, we've done that a couple times um, over at eleventh. It's been a while since we did our last one, but. Maybe not necessarily infantry and tanks too much, but we switch around our offense and defense and arty and whatnot. I think we may switch around our armor too. Um, we did it once against um, seventh actually, which was a t in a friendly, which is a terrible choice. <laughs> we ended up losing the game in about 15 minutes. But um, we've done it a few times, and yeah, you get to you're exactly right. You get to appreciate what the other parts of the team do, and you know you really you, you understand um, if you didn't already. You know it's not so easy. This is what they're sort of facing, and you, you're right. It creates a better understanding between clan mates and groups in the clan. Um, so that's a great point, show. 
I uh, definitely think you should maybe do it as like maybe a matchup between the two of you so both agree that you know your your both friendly matches are, are, are gonna be like completely flipped so that way you're both as shit as each other. <laughs> Loso is 100% holding down this defense though. Yeah. Well, I have not seen him move from that point much and it is incredible seeing how much uh, difference a machine gunner on a defense point can make. I think, you, you know, for an effective defense, you've got to have, you know, an accurate machine gunner. It, it's, it's worth its weight in gold. Um, you know, having, having a couple of MGs on that point just set up um, it just suppresses that enemy and just keeps him at bay and, and as we as you said he hasn't moved from that point purely because the enemy just can't get near him. I think MG is even even an offense like you know, different role but just what you do is a lot of the time, you know, you may split your, your squad up into two groups. Um, you get your MG perhaps, you know, providing covering fire, maybe a couple boys back there supporting him. Um, you know, he may be killing the enemy or just suppressing them, um, keeping him busy while you go around and flank like as I said, on offense, uh, on defense, there's a lockdown in areas as, as Lo Loso's done all game. Um, they really are an underappreciated, and undervalued um, part of the Not part of the squad. And but I mean, at the same time, people do know how lethal a good MG can be because, as you said, as soon as you get that MG up and they hear it, you're fucking you're target number one. <laughs> They're coming straight for your head. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's nothing more satisfying than when you uh, when you kill an enemy MG and you can see your squad push up and, and move to, move into that position that they've been pinned in for so long. Absolutely, as a squad, that's the first thing I, I do. I'm sitting back usually, and then as soon as I hear an MG, I make it my priority to get to you know get a long shot on that MG if I can. Um, which actually brings me to a quick little tip: if you as a squad leader, um, if you use the binoculars and you line up, you know it could be 300 meters out, 400 meters out. You line up that shot, right, and you switch straight to your rifle from your binoculars. I mean, you have to account for the drop at three, four hundred meters, the bullet drop. But let's say 150, 200 meters, you switch from your binoculars and you got the dot lined up on the head, straight to your rifle. You shoot, it's going to hit it every time, 100% accuracy. It does not move. Yeah, right. Um, I've got some videos as well that I may send in for our boys later on just to show them proof of concept, but you're going to hit it literally every time. I was playing for you the other day. Um, it was actually something that I used to do back in the day, but I'd forgot about um, and started to do it again. And, you know, it's a good way as a squad leader to counter snipers, um, counter MGs. You know, you get your knocks out, um, and it, it's like having a sniper as long as they're not moving. You know, it's unreal. And obviously the MG and the snipers usually will be stationary. So it's, it's, a, it's the best way to counter those without having an actual sniper on hand. Uh, if you don't believe me, just give it a try. Uh, you'll see it fucking absolutely works and it's um, a great little tool to have in your back pocket. It's what we provide at Lads, Lads, Lads Let Loose. Uh, dad jokes and uh, great tips as well. One thing I'm actually uh, wondering, just watching this uh, tank at the moment, um, is I learned a little tip and trick about uh, tanking recently off of someone who's, funnily enough, from the 11th. Um, and one thing that I've learned with these nighttime maps and the foggy maps is that it actually doesn't, well, nighttime it doesn't necessarily benefit having your uh, brightness all the way up. Uh, during the daytime, if you actually put your brightness down, it gives you more visibility. Really? Through the fog, yeah. Through the fog. Absolutely. You turn your bright brightness down, it gives you more visibility. And fucking shout out to Mike, one from the 11th, for teaching me that, because holy shit, is it a game changer. It makes sense, I guess, because if you go driving at night time and the fog's out, you turn your uh, you turn your lights right down and you get a fog light, so night yeah, that makes sense. It's, night time it's a bit different, and uh, I, I think that having your brightness up is probably beneficial during the night time, but I can 100% confirm hey, that fog, it's, yeah. if it's foggy during the daytime, yeah, having your brightness what? up does not benefit. What happens during the daytime in your eyes, it's glary. You'll notice it's, you get a fuck ton of glare when you turn that brightness up. Um, so absolutely, like I usually run my brightness at 170 um, on most maps, but you know, you come to that fog and I drop it right down to 80%.
Um, you know, and you can see at, at distance, you know, you can see way better. If I have up a 170, you, you, you know, you're going to be severely hindering your, your long range viewing. That was Oh, such a satisfying feeling managing to diffuse a Saudi A. Never knowing how long's left on it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're staring you get death blood in the face. Blood pumping and you're uh, sweat dripping and you're, yeah. you're like, come on, don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up. Yep. Uh, we might see a turn. Uh, there, the tides turn slightly here. Nine May for the first time of starting uh, to cap in the fourth point. So uh, let's switch back to Loso, who we know is defending how they're how they're holding up. Has this guy died yet? No, no. <laughs> Actually, he has. He's died a few times. He's died from the um, the Arty. Ah, true. Is that his garrison? Yeah, yeah. That was the one aid at one point two that uh kind of hit him on the head, but. Ah, uh, look, it was like nine for getting Arty on the point now. It's heard a few shots landed. Surprising yeah. infantry stuck in like that. Got in so close. Yeah, Lo Lasso's a good player, hey. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Playing really, really smart. They might come behind there. We'll see how okay. uh, price is going. Uh, back over to price and see what he's doing. He's well, uh, made help. a couple of changes. He, he did opt for the uh, the car Boys, at one doing? point, I think, just to give him some distance on the eye. Uh, but it oh, looks yeah, like he switched be back to the FG42. Yeah. Okay, uh, so don't put OP in that wheat field. It looks like they might be trying to pull back and put some offensive pressure on the midpoint. So, um, looks like the recon have pulled back and they're starting to contest mid. So we might have a bit of a cap race on here. Well, the best medicine to a, a cap is to go back and put pressure on the other one if you can afford to do yeah. it. So smart move. Ooh! Oh, open the map at the wrong time there. Close it range quarter. They're starting to cap, but uh, nine may are still, still edging it slowly so if there is a cap race we are going to see nine may uh, take it unless Losso can uh, defend here yep. that can be one of the things um you know if you commit everyone to defense obviously you know yeah. it allows the other team to commit everyone to offense if they pick up on it but you can also use that into your favor you can you can um use it as like a a fang. You can drop everyone back to defense, or you can get your offensive guys to sit back a little bit out of the zone and let them think they've got everyone. And then, all you know, couple sit back a couple minutes, don't put any pressure on. They might then all go to offense, and then all of a sudden, you know, you go onto the point with your two squads or whatever, and there's no there's no one back there to defend. Um, it's happened. It's, we've won games off the back of that multiple times. It, it does happen. It's a bit of a risk. Um, if you get lucky and you do it just right, you know, it's, it's a... Um, a play that's worth doing at times. Yeah, man, going back, way back in the day, TFMC versus 11th, what we call the OG derby, I watched about three or four matches before I was affiliated with anyone where TFMC would do exactly that. They'd sit right back, 11th would start pushing onto the next point, and then all of a sudden, and it doesn't work these days anymore because it's just too obvious, but you'd see uh, an airhead going down and a bombing run that'd follow it, and TFMC would be back right in the fight. So you've got to have a lot of patience, you've got to have a lot of smarts, and you've got to have a good commander. Uh, and I'm sure both of these teams definitely do have uh, all of those uh, in combination. I can't stop. But I think also, so good. I think that, <laughs> Unreal. Yeah, nine so may cap the point. Nine may have just capped the fourth point here. So massive. Here we go. Massive uh, tie change there. Is that going to change the rest of the game? Are they going to be able to recover from Five that fourth point or that fifth point? I guess one thing we know is that the uh, the RE won't be able to reach there. So I guess. Um, They've got that on their side, but we all know, you know, falling back to your last point, it's so hard to recover from. Uh, they get the tanks and arty guns on this, uh, and AT guns on this hill. Good luck. It's game over. Yeah. This is yeah. demoralizing. Eights are definitely uh, putting a lot of pressure on those tanks, though, from uh, Led's point of view uh, before. He was standing outside the tank, actually, fighting off the infantry that are pushing up to his tank, so. It's, um, you know, eights are still trying to put all that pressure on. 
Absolutely. The sooner they can recap, the yeah, better for ages. They are still trying to get that <laughs> tank. He's absolutely defending that tank with his life. Oh, I don't, I don't, tank I don't, tank I don't think I've seen Vled in the tank very much problem. in the last probably <laughs> 20 minutes. Uh, he's been too busy fighting off MP uh, off of Sati, the, uh, the satchels and uh, ATs. They've uh, finally got the... We've uh, certainly been blessed with some, some awesome gameplay here, but you can see 9 May starting to uh, actually put the pressure on here. I was uh, about to lead into that question of what do you do here? 20 minutes to go, you're 4-1 up, okay, you okay. push in for the kill, knowing that you, you know, if you lose, uh, lose oh, the point, you're still, you're still in control 3-2, or do you, you, do you play reserved and, and, and hold out? What's that on the ground? That's the uh, okay. American supplies, I believe. Oh, I, sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Oddie, is this Hail Mary time for Rachel May? Are we in that range yet, or they've still got a bit of time to calm down? We've got a bit of time. What is it, 20 minutes left? Um, definitely be... Considering, you know, in the last 10 minutes, you saw the Hail Mary, maybe 15. Um, it's definitely worrying. I wouldn't say panic stations just yet. Um, but you need to get that point cap ASAP because, you know, if they solidify it, good luck. You're not getting, it, getting that um, point back, I don't think. Yeah. I'm not uh, I think I just said 8th May, by the way. Sorry, it's 9 May. It's 8th I'm talking about. Sorry, Shelgo. I just wanted to apologise. Considering 9 May uh, actually have three tanks pushing up onto that... Uh, that fourth point, it's yeah. uh, going to be a bit difficult for eights to get it back if they don't uh, start taking those tanks down. That's for sure. And I don't think I, I don't think it's fair to say that eight haven't dealt with uh, nine May's tanks through lack of you know, trying. I think nine May have just defended their tanks so well. So. Um, I think it's more of a credit to Nine May as opposed to, you know, 8th not being able to deal with them. Uh, 8th have definitely been putting the pressure on those tanks, as you saw before, with Vled not even being in the tank for half of it. He was, uh, you know, definitely defending his tank really well in amongst his infi as well, and uh, I think that uh, attests very much to Nine May and, and how the infi protect their uh, tanks and their no, armoured. For sure, we can see getting, down, getting nodes. down the nodes now. And... Well, I think we can all say, you know, regardless of the outcome, both teams, you know, put a good showing in today. Like, it's been a quality competitive match. Like, there's absolutely nothing to be ashamed of for either team here. It's, um, yeah, it's been great to watch. Absolutely. So for those that don't know, uh, for Summit, uh, the actual main season doesn't start until May. Um, there is currently what we call the planes for, for this round. Uh, so nine, eight All teams, right, sorry, I believe, in the planes, and only five will qualify Very for the main tournament. Six. So uh, I believe the way it works, the earlier you win your games, you know, the easier route and you've got to qualify. Um, obviously, you know, it. if you lose your first game, you're going to be disadvantaged by playing a winner of, um, yeah, sorry, oh, the, the next loser of, of the, the other games. Um, and, you know, if you start to lose one or two more, uh, it's going to be very, very difficult to, to qualify. So, um, yeah, both teams are going to really want to uh, obviously start yeah, strong here. And, good recon um, on the other side. I, I, to be honest, watching how both of them have played, I, I wouldn't be surprised if both of them qualify. Um, you know, that regardless of, of who wins or who loses here. So, uh, yeah, both teams have been very, very impressive. And as we say that, the eighth is starting to cap oh, back. Uh, Come back. Fourth point, so we could... Uh, potentially, Nine may have pushed a little bit too prematurely here. <sighs> so whoever loses this um, will still could still qualify. They can still qualify, yeah, yeah. So they basically just go into a, the, a bracket. They'll, they'll play one of the losers, I believe, of one of the other games. Um, and then if they lose that, I think they've got one more shot. Um, you know that they'll have to win to to, to qualify. So, uh, yeah, I'll have that's to familiarise myself with the rules. I know rums all over it. Uh, uh, some roughs. That's great. It, Summit's such a good competition, Crispy. It's awesome. Mm. Um, you know they've got all of this stuff figured out. It, I'm so stoked that we're um, that we're partnering up to broadcast such a clever competition and an inclusive competition and um, really well organised. He's having a look. I was going to say we should call this Louis, um, start calling him by, you know, the guy from uh, Fury's name. And then I was like, I couldn't remember his name. I was like, what, what's he called? I had to find out his nickname was War Daddy, which I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> That's quality, that one. I've never seen a bloke run around and hit fire with a machine he's, gun as much as this guy has. It's unreal. loving that buzzsaw, isn't he? Absolutely loving it. I reckon somebody else to do it. 
It's like watching oh, someone right. play yeah. Doom they back think, on the PC they back they in the day. It in is so you know, he's like a real specialist. Do you doing that? Yeah, it's not easy. You have to have a lot of time problem. with that gun yeah, to be yeah, good at that. Yeah. And a lot of skill. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. just because you call it in doesn't mean like the infantry is going to be like, oh, fuck, we're spotted. Everybody move to a different area now. Like, go get it. Like that. Yeah, shut it down. <laughs> yeah. Like, call it out as you're fighting it. Like, there's no point in not eliminating the problem. Is that a bit of disharmony between 8th May yeah. potentially going on there? Yeah. You doing as bad as me, I was having a listen. Right now. It's That's always funny. tough when you, you know, when you get to this this team, you know, frustrations start to start to show and shine through the cracks. But uh, having said that, they're still putting that pressure on. It's not game over that. for them yet. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't write them off just yet. Did you get the guy that was shooting? They're going to have to try something soon, though, because 17 minutes, they've still got to get another point after this one. Yeah. Well, they had a moment there where they were starting to cap the point. You see that little bit of blue. Yeah. 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 The gate's building a little bit. We'll switch over to uh, 9 May as well. Just, uh, I think he's, uh, he's out of his tank again. And, uh, <laughs> I've never seen a tank out of his tank so much. Yeah, he's he's that, chasing that recon tank down and uh, letting his crew know where they are. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My favorite players. There goes that tank. Woo. Honestly, I, I'm in I'm in awe of Charge this tank crew in, in how this tank command runs his tank. It is insane. As you said, I have not seen someone out of their tank as much as I've seen Vled out of his tank. And it's incredible. You're living up to the name War Daddy. I think you might need to change it. Like, bloody hell. Yeah, he is. He is. War Vleddy. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> like, this man has no fucks given. He is running for the point with his gun out, not even worried about the fact he's not in his tank. That is insane. If my Russian viewers can, I believe I just heard precision strike or something of that nature. Precision strike or something like that. I think you can confirm that for us. If you charge that point. Ori, that was the best accent I've ever heard. Privet. Privet. We're hoping, uh, hoping after this game that uh, the streamers and the uh, the clan reps for both sides will join us for a post-match interview. So don't go anywhere after the game. We're hoping that they'll join us. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll love to hear their thoughts on the game. You will literally, if Losso or Vled come on, you're going to experience the first time that a commentator has ever given Fellatio yep. verbally to a player because those boys have just performed admirably today. Oh, agreed, agreed, agreed. Great. It's great they are. They really identified who they wanted. You know, obviously to be uh, streamed. They chose quality, <laughs> quality yeah. players. Um, that was unreal. They're some of the best tanking. Yeah, you know, I've watched a lot of matches. But like just actually, I'm sure there's been outstanding players too that we haven't seen. But yeah. some of the best um, tanking I've seen just in a match that's been recorded. Yeah. So it's uh, unreal. I mean, I know that I would probably not understand well, we anything right that is saying, but to have a privilege of us. having a run in That's one of his tanks would be right fucking now. incredible. It really would. It really would. There's a supply <laughs> drop coming down there <laughs> for um, for eighth, just north of the point. Wait, are you dead? Uh, no, I'm behind you. I think there's a squad lead there as well, so we might they oh, might get a clutch die. red zone up here, yeah, uh, just to put a bit more yeah. pressure on. Yeah. <laughs> If you're asking if I'm dead just in this minute, no. Back to Losso, who's just still carving up, <laughs> and unfortunately got, gets the commentator's curse there as I switch to him. It's, uh, they've got a flank. They've got to do something here. For old eight. I'm feeling them. Back in the medium. They definitely... Yeah, they, they definitely use mediums. It's a lot more than we do. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, when an Oceanic Clan comes up against them, because I'm not 100% sure, but as far as I'm aware, TFMC and Ross and, and Six, I know Six and, and Eleventh definitely do prioritise heavies, like, all the time. Um, it'll be interesting to see which one actually prevails, do you, think you know, coming up against them. Do you think it's potentially so, you know, a medium's going to get up, up to the point quicker? Is it is it potentially... A speed thing that they're using them for, or it's. I I, I feel that it's both a speed and a few and a uh, resources thing because in the as I was saying earlier, like the fact that you know heavies are gonna cost you a bit more when it comes to fuel and it can be more advantageous 
uh, having, you know, more tanks on the field. But it is definitely a speed thing as well. Like, you know, your heavies are going to take you a lot longer to get down to the point, especially considering they're already at the last point now. They are uh, trying to cap that last point from 9 May. Um, having your tanks up there quicker is beneficial. I reckon at this stage of the map, Shell 100%, they're using it for speed. Um, but earlier in the map, like Oddie was saying, it's definitely... Even in pub matches, you don't see it in Oceana. I encourage anyone that's watching from the Northern Hemisphere to pop into an Oceana server if you're sort of ever um, maybe up at your morning or, or late, late at, at your night to come across. When we see medium tanks even in pub matches, we have a little bit of a giggle. Um, so, he, he, you know, easy prey, but these guys are using it quite cleverly but definitely at this point i think it's um it's about speed getting up to that point and uh, guess, controlling this vector i guess when you've got someone like vled who's uh, gonna jump out and uh, defend that yeah. tank no matter what it doesn't matter what you're driving you could be driving a bloody golf cart for all i care yeah <laughs> yeah definitely agree on that one there i guess we uh live by the mantra go big or go home in oceana without yeah true yes oh, and let's be and you love roaming around your lights <laughs> yeah Sorry, Joe, go ahead. Uh, I 100% agree with that, that I, I think that Oceana is a bit more, um, yes, go big or go home and uh, likes to, oh, I don't know how much I can say and should say, but, uh, you know, coming from my perspective, uh, a, a lot of you guys uh, like to go big or go home, um, and that's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> Sometimes it's not always a, a good thing, um, no. and it definitely makes me reassess the sure. fact that maybe I should be using uh, mediums a bit more than I, I do tend to either favour my recons or my lights um, or my heavies. I don't tend to run in mediums all that much, but, you know, watching this type of gameplay makes me uh, think that maybe I should be. Where I just died, they have no pain. Agreed. The cap was back on there. Bloody Losso is running a, yeah. a minimal HUD, so we can't see what's going on. Yeah, there. unfortunately, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll flip over to, to Price. Here's uh, with the tank too. Oh, go ahead, sorry, brother. No, you go, mate. I was going to say, I, I know I'm not a tanker, but when I run a tank, I've always, if I'm not in a heavy, I've always got that constant yeah, fear of running into a heavy and just knowing mm -hmm. that I'm sort of one hit, which is what <laughs> drives me out like, no, I need some sort of heavy here, something that I can, you know, I've got a chance to, to pen. I know you can in certain, if you got good shots and there's certain weak points, but I want to be able to just, you know, front pen that, um, that heavy tank if I need to. Mm -hmm. I, I agree, but that's why I also tend to favour the recons and the lights in the fact that they are so much quicker um, and more manoeuvrable, so if you do come front on with a heavy, you're, you're more likely to be able to get out of there, so, you know, that's, that's yep. my view on it, and, yeah, I've, I've never really seen mediums as the more valuable asset, but maybe I should reassess my, uh, my views on it. <laughs> do you remember the recon back in the day, like the first six months of release, where it was like a two shot to the to the back of a heavy to kill it in a recon vehicle? Yeah. Mm. Yes, it was. Uh, they were unreal so back then. So funny, man. Yeah. That sounds overpowered as fuck. I oh, love it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you would absolutely love that. There was quite a time there. Yeah. Take a big blank, get a ping, and then come in behind them and boom. Bang, bang, before they, can, before they can even load around or turn around, yeah. Let again outside of his amazing. He is an absolute machine. Let him go. Like, all of the streamers, Pricey, Colt, um, he actually landed in, uh, in the sniper role, sorry, in the, yeah, in the yeah. recon role. Shelmian is the, the mad squad lead that's just been carving up, doing the work of someone like a Creepy Crawly or a... Yeah. Uh, or, or a crispy, and then you know you've got these other two that are just absolute nutcases. I could watch Losso and Vled all day. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't believe it. we're coming up to an hour and a half now, and, and it feels like we've only been watching ten minutes. It's been such a good game to watch. I'm literally leaning forward on my desk. I don't sit like this ever. I've got the worst posture in the world because I'm just watching everything. <laughs> that tank looks a little bit uh, stuck there, though. I think he might be. Yeah, yeah. You blew up behind him by the sounds of it. It's um... No, it's been... Look, it's made getting up at 5 o'clock um, definitely not so bad now, or 4.30. Um, it's been absolutely quality. 
Yeah, man, I tell you what, I had a dream, uh, one of those nervous dreams, I woke up at like 2.30 and then I dreamt that I'd missed the match, so I woke up in a cold sweat. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm here, this is awesome. We've all, I think we've all been, uh, that's the one thing we've had in common, we've all, we all had a broken sleep, worrying that we wouldn't make the, uh, the alarm at 4.30 this morning to, uh, to watch the game, but mm. fortunately we all made it, and uh, yeah, we've been blessed with an absolute belter of a match. Could ask for a uh, better first summit match to bring it in, honestly. Oh, it's been awesome to watch. Yeah, really, really good. Speaks highly of the league. Um, I'm quite, you know, well done by eighth here holding out that last point. I thought if they once they caught lost four, there's basically game over. It's going to be a five nil guarantee, but they've they've done really well to hold that. Yeah, I think like Crispy said before, eighth is definitely going to qualify. Well, not definitely, we can't say that, but based on this performance, even though they may potentially lose, I think we could probably say they're in a position now that they've got a lot to come back from. I think we'll see them in Summit this year. We can see that they've managed to get that red zone up as well, so uh, they've still been able to put a little bit of pressure. It seems like 10 times better than fucking 21st was. And I think uh, you can hear Price there giving credit to 9 May, saying how... how you know, they're 10 times better than 21st, who were the first winners of the Summit, I believe. Frank, was that right? Fucking three or four? Yeah, bro. Yeah. That was uh, Summit Edition 1. They, um, 21st won that, so that's a huge compliment. Yeah. Like, we would have pushes and then our outposts would get wiped. Pushes and outposts get wiped. Like... It's good to hear him giving credit to the other team, you know, just... Yeah. That, that's what it's all about, you know, you give credit where credit is due, and... Um, I wanted to retire. Yeah, that's what I'm all about. Yeah. Yeah. That's so good. No, me neither. Hey, we can't control the blue lines, man, either. Yep. 100%. Definitely, I think that uh, eight will take a lot away from this match as well, and uh, you know it'll give them something to think about and and s some points that they possibly might need to work on as well. So, it's, uh, yeah. even though it's been a tough match for them, it's also a good learning curve for I think both sides. Imagine a rematch in you know a couple of months' yeah. time or, or whatever. Mm. Please. Yeah. Watch this again. Absolutely. I need a poster of Lawso just stuck up on my wall. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need a lead poster, thanks. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm just watching north where you died, bro. You just burst fire all day, brother. You just keep doing it. <laughs> He's, he's How long's going? Here. How long have we got, Crispy? Sorry, Sean. We have got... How long have we got? Uh, we've got that timer up. I think there's about six minutes left. Yeah, about six minutes, I think. This dude's full yeah, sprinkler actioning out there. Five minutes the, uh... I think it's it's pretty safe to say that uh, 9 may are going to hold out here. Whether they get the 3-2 or the 4-1, or, or whether they push for the 5-0. Um, yeah, it's going to another question but I think we're, we're, we're safe in assuming that with five minutes left uh, nine may have just controlled their sectors very very well here and uh, if we switch back to uh, to Shelmian um, there's not a lot happening on the now, so, um, yeah, we'll do, we'll do. looks like they're gonna get uh, their season off to us to a win here well, that's you there. So do they qualify immediately with a win? Sorry no, for being ignorant. I believe they'll go into another round. If they get a second win, I think they automatically qualify after that second win. So it puts them in a in a really you know really good uh, really good position and a strong position to be in uh, going into that second round. Yes. Oh, from behind, Shell, Jesus, Shell me in. We'll go back to Vled, who's uh, having a fun Adam's time. Adam's take again. Yeah, <laughs> it's bloody brilliant. I love it. I just love the uh, the balls on him, just to get out and go, nah, sod up. Yes, the dedication to uh, protecting his tank. See, I think he may have started an infantry squad here, actually. Ah, oh, fair. fair. Yeah. With that time remaining to somebody. Five minutes to go, it's, you know, just, just get as much infantry on the point as you can. Let's see if we can pick up any uh, Russian translations in here. Mm. Yeah, I'm listening. 
He just said, geez, that Frankie's a good commentator. <laughs> oh my god. Thanks, Casanova. Хорош. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but was there not um, last season a rule against putting garrisons and <laughs> OPs in bushes in summer? No? Uh, I don't think, I think it did say that initially, but they changed the rule to put yeah, it in inaccessible locations. Yeah, because I think we had a disagreement with that. <laughs> but like, bruh. I think it was, you can put them in, in a bush as long as it's accessible, but you can't put them... You can't you know, use the hacks. You can't use a, a glitch in the game to, to hide the garrison, essentially, yeah. Roggy, yeah, Roggy. That's one thing I do know we, we like to do a lot. Whether we um, sit in the bushes or not, I do know that we do use bushes a lot for um, putting garrisons and OPs. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Yeah, you have particularly to Particularly on those open maps as well, you know, you're playing something like Kursk or... Uh, something that's so open, you definitely need to use those bushes to your advantage. Yeah, this stuff looks fine. <laughs> I love these transitions. It's, uh, no, how good are they? Yeah. Minute 50 left. Yeah, that's, uh, it's a GG. All over. Well, all the way in there. It's uh, certainly been an impressive start, and uh, yeah, massive congratulations to uh, yeah, I was to nine major train station uh, just commiserations to, to the eighth. Cap, uh, but, they put uh, up a hell of a fight, um, but uh, oh, it's been so that. fun, so yeah. good. Well done, eighth. Unfortunately, there has to be a winner and there has to be a loser, and uh, nine may are the uh, the winners on this one. And it's not a five zero either, which we know in the hell at loose community, that's the sign of. Uh, the real big win, so respect well, to Wade for holding him out and staying strong and not oh, yeah, giving up. I'm gonna butcher this, but here's uh, the Russian translation of congratulations. Ostravizia! Nice day! I reckon I reckon say that one more time nice and slow, see if they can uh, rate your uh, your translation. Ostravizia! Oh mate, that sounds beautiful. We'll see how we go. <laughs> Hopefully uh, you can open with that, Oddie, if uh, the Nine May, jo Nine May boys join us uh, in the VC after. <laughs> Oh, mate. I'll, it'll probably said that butcher that I've asked for dudes from their cousin. Who knows? Fucking <laughs> 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 Sorry, I was... What's up? Oh, Stinks does enjoy the time. Never a <laughs> moment with you, Woody. Oh, it's great. Okay. Sting is... He's an actual regular at my oh, streams, so I, I see him pretty often. Oh, yeah, he's on. We're watching. I can see the... I see the message. Oh, they are trying to cap that nice. lost yeah, point back yeah. They're not going to get it, unfortunately. Yeah. They're not uh, going to, but they did try. Fantastic uh, game, and uh, yeah, as we said, 9 May, kick their season off to a start. Yeah. Congratulations, 9 May. Yeah, well done. Incredible effort by 8, here. but... Yeah, yeah, we got on here. We got some... Oof. Oh, hey, Pricey man, did well, 553. Let's have a look at uh, Lasso. The, the main man on the MG. Jesus, Ooh. look at that AT player down over there for 8th. Uh, Hello. We've got a guest. I'm open 9 uh, May. Kebapa Blue. Lasso has just joined us. Mate, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get, we'll, we'll get uh, into <laughs> the game in a sec when everybody joins, but uh, commiserations, mate. It was a fantastic game and... Um, yeah, we were really blessed to uh, to watch that one. Uh, what, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, you know, pretty disappointing outcome. I mean, we had come into this game playing pretty well, so we had a lot, you know we had a lot of confidence, but you know, didn't really go as planned. I mean, we got to midpoint first, held that for a little bit, but you know, they're they're already played a huge role. You know, I don't, I'm not sure what happened with our recon, but we couldn't seem to keep them off their arty guns. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, uh... Your, your recon was your recon was doing a, a, a very admirable job. Before we get into anything serious, Losso, can I just say, I am now your number one fan. Your work on the MG is some of the best I've ever seen, mate. I, and I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. Like I'm literally a massive fan. You, you hit fire with the thing. You're patient. You sat there on that defensive position. Your burst fire was accurate. 
um, mate, you played one of the most stellar games I've seen, and to make that our first stream of Summit Edition 3, Lasso, that was absolutely sensational. So thank you for streaming tonight, mate. Yeah, no problem. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I didn't really feel like I had a good game. You know, I was trying to do my job standpoint, but uh, yeah, you know, they Nine Maid did, did a good job. They put a, a lot of pressure on and they're, you know, they're, they're coordinated. They are hunting our Garys the whole time, pounding us with with the artillery and their, you know, their tank drone points, so. Certainly, certainly. Hopefully, yeah. tough. We, got, we got other games to play, you know. If we had won this one, we would have had to play someone, you know, like HL, Lee, or Merc. You know, next out. So we're still we're still trying to build our team. You know, what I mean, it's still pretty new. The roster's fluctuating. You know, almost daily. So I think it's. I think we'll you, uh, you guys certainly put up a hell of a fight. So yeah, it's certainly not a performance you should be ashamed of. And uh, yeah, we we were, as as we said, it was a really really entertaining game. And hopefully we've done it justice when you watch it back and um, you know get to see what a what a what a performance you guys put up. But uh, talking to Nine May, we. We do need to congratulate them. I'll, I'll hand over to their clan rep, uh, Casanova. Uh, mate, congratulations on the win. What a, what a fantastic start to the season. Oh, hello. Uh, it's a, I think it's a brilliant game. Uh, I, I want to say that uh, Ailt is a great team. They are unbelievable. It's a very hard game. Um, and uh, we want to say that enemy tanks, enemy infantry, enemy artillery uh, walk like a, like a good mechanism. Uh, I'm glad to win this game. I'm glad to be on a summit num season three. Um, and thank you for casting. I want to see this match uh, waiting for you to or Twitch. Uh, thank you. Uh, you're welcome, mate, and uh, congratulations on the win. Uh, we'll hand over to uh, to one of your tankers, Vled. Um, mate, I haven't seen a tanker spend as much time out of his tank as you did. You were defending that thing with your life. Uh, that was uh, some incredible gameplay we saw from you. But um, one thing I did want to want to bring up um, was the two uh, PZ4s you took out on the midpoint as as the eighth was starting to capture. It was for me that was play of the game, and I, you know I know that we all discussed it. It was. Uh, a, a, you know, a, a piece of play that changed the game. What was uh, what was going through your mind there? Did you expect to get both of them? Oh, sorry. Can I please repeat last uh, part? Yeah. Vled, we 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 thought that we thought that your attack when you took down two tanks at the same time, you took down two PZ fours, uh, was probably the play of the game. Uh, and we were wondering what was going through your mind when that happened. Oh, it's uh, nothing special. It's <laughs> uh, it's our usual attack. I think it's yeah. it was hard, but uh, but uh, we we didn't know that they couldn't uh, see us. We shot their panther, and uh, we thought they. They m must know that we are from their left. I know. Yeah, it was uh, yeah. very impressive it, it indeed. Was... Yeah, thank you. And, I just uh, want to say... Oh, show you guys, sorry. Being a tanker myself, Vled, holy shit. <laughs> that is... I, I am so taken away by how incredible you are as a tank commander and from a fellow tanker myself I've never performed in um, competitions but you are an incredible tanker and kudos to you for spending like the last half an hour outside of your damn tin can and absolutely obliterating anyone who tried to satchel you it was incredible thank you very much yeah, I just want to say it was um, an awesome performance by Nine May and both um, the Eighth as well as as the unit. Great match to watch, and it was just so patient by Ninth May. Um, seemed like you, you know, you very experienced. You've been there, and you've done that before. Um, I know that you said the artillery is your strength, um, but it seemed like although your artillery was great, that um, your defensive unit and your armor really did a, a an amazing job. Um, as said, Vled taking out those two tanks and getting out and just clearing the points at multiple times um, were really 
game changing plays. Um, what do you think your strength is outside of your artillery as a team? Castle, Castle. Oh. I think we just lost Castle. Castle was, we, we could probably ask Shelmy, and Shelmy and you played a really, really strong game as well. What would you say the strengths are of of Nine May after that effort today? Uh, hello, guys. Uh, it was a nice game, I think. Uh, I think uh, our main strength uh, is RT, uh, as being said, uh, but uh, also we have uh, good. Uh, uh, communication between uh, the squads and we uh, can uh, pull back very fast or we can uh, prepare to attack very fast and we can uh, switch positions uh, very quickly so we can be anywhere and nowhere uh, and I think uh, it's uh, it's uh, our strength between RT and uh, tanks uh, yep your team working and knowing what needs to be done and getting it done, you know, fast and efficiently. Yeah. Uh, was, uh, yeah, yeah. No, no, go on, go on. Oh, I was just going to say it was a really impressive match from both sides. I think the map layout was difficult uh, and, and I think you both contested the midpoint really well. Um, Shelmy, and watching you squad lead was really fun for me to watch and I learned a lot watching you play. Um, where do you think you uh, won the match? Do you think it was when you capped midpoint, or do you th still think that there was a, a long way to go once that happened? Oh, actually, it was very tough uh, for us yeah. uh, losing the third point, so we almost captured it. Uh, but uh, the the uh, the uh, uh, get it back and uh, took it. Uh, uh, I think uh, we won match when we uh, uh, clean out uh, the third point and uh, took it, and uh, we were pretty sure the, this, uh, this is our game. I think, uh, and uh, we have not a lot of infantry in our back. Uh, we have a strong front line. Uh, we have uh, at least two heavy tanks on the battlefield every time. So. Uh, uh, and uh, they were extremely defensive for the first. Uh, they just standing in the strong point and uh, giving us uh, uh, defensive power, so we can uh, prepare our next attack uh, for the f fourth point. So yes, I think uh, uh, we thought we win this game when we took the third point and clean out uh, our sector. Um, I'm going to try and say this, but you can laugh because it's probably really bad. But. Uh, Blasaba, <laughs> thank you very much for your uh, your insights. We really appreciate it. And congratulations. Let's throw it over to the eighth, uh, Crispy. We've got Pricey here. We've got thank Snow, and uh, we've already got Losso, who we, who I've talked to and told him how much I absolutely loved watching him play. Um, do you guys have any questions that you'd like to ask Pricey or um, yeah, or Snow? I'll, uh, I'll I'll throw it to Pricey first, if, if I may. Um, just want to say, look, commiserations, boys. As I said to Losso before you guys joined. Uh, I think you put up a hell of a fight and um, it certainly wasn't a, a pushover for 9 May and um, you know the fact that you guys are a very very uh, you know new clan and young clan as, as Losso was saying that you're doing a lot of building I think you put an incredible performance in that you should be proud of today so um, Price so we know uh, you know the, the 9 May ar artillery was uh, causing some problems for Losso there um, we saw you dealing with it pretty quickly um, how hard was it to, to, to get on top of and, and deal with I know that they built up there um you know their, their barricades around it was was it a, a difficult task for you to be able to deal with it we you know we saw you doing all you could but um you know how did you find that you went with the the artillery oh man i i'm gonna be honest with you um you know that was probably one of the bloodiest artillery battles uh i've had in quite a long time um you know we kind of at first, I think we kind of maybe took them a little bit by surprise at how quick we got back down there. But, you know, they were able to adapt to, um, you know, what me and my spotter were doing pretty pretty quickly. And uh, I got to give credit to their artillery. They are very disciplined and, and not getting off of those guns. I mean, it didn't matter if you, um, you know, if you shot two of the, the three gunners on the guns, that third guy was not going to get off to, to try and hunt you. They trusted each other. Um, they trusted those those roving uh, protective units um, to keep them alive, and 
Um, you know, when we kind of did kind of keep them off for a bit, you know, they adapted and, and built more bunkers. Um, they brought in those uh, those supply trucks to kind of shore up the side defenses. Um, and after that, it, it was just kind of just a bloodbath trying to get anywhere close to their gunners. So. Um, their their uh, their protective rovings. Uh, Can I just jump in, Crispy? Great. Yeah, sure. Uh, Pricey, I, I've got to say, the other thing that impressed me the most in terms of that artillery setup, it, it, it's exactly what you were saying. At one point we were watching you, it was very early in the match, uh, and Odyssey and I laughed. Um, you were you were scoping in, you were taking out a few blokes, and one of the 9 May artillery gunners jumped out, had a quick look at you, and then jumped straight back on the gun and kept shooting, and you, you ended up taking him out. There's a lot of discipline there in terms of their gunners. The, the thing I noticed, and, and you ended up taking him out, was the way that they'd set their nodes up so quickly. You got down to their artillery price so, so quickly, and yet they managed to set up their nodes with barbed wire all around them. And I remember watching you seeing it. What was going through your mind when you saw that? Is that something that you see very often, the, the nodes protected so quickly, or were you expecting just to sort of seeing them where ready to take them out? Um, it... Yes and no. It, it, it's just I, the, for me, uh, and you know, just my experience and, and what I've seen. It kind of just goes off of um, you know, clan by clan. So you know, most clans mm. that uh, have a lot of experience, especially in in, in Summit and, and TPL and all the other ones, um, you find that they do kind of uh, put barbed wire around them, um, and makes it extremely difficult. I know uh, me and my spotter um, a while ago. Kind of figured out a little trick how to get into the barbed wire. Yeah, we watched you doing uh, that. And, yeah, yeah. Um, once thing we, I mean, at least for us, when we see barbed wire, we kind of just leave it alone for a bit and just kind of focus on our main task. Um, I will admit that's the first time I've ever seen nodes built right behind artillery, and yeah. that is a great little trick, um, yeah. especially when you know your artillery is extremely well dis as well disciplined as nine mazes and gonna be able to protect each other. Um, but yeah, I chuckled at it too. Um, I saw him hop off the gun and look at me and goes, oh, okay, I see you, I, I'm just gonna hop back on the gun. I was like, <laughs> kind, of, kind of took a little offense to that. I was like, you can at least shoot once at me or something. <laughs> he was like, I'm just gonna go back on the gun and, and, and do what I have to do. But um, yeah, I, I gotta give credit to 9 May for how disciplined their artillery guys are. Cause um, you know, nine times out of 10, if you get back there with, an artillery squad the guys are going to jump off the guns and come hunt and come help hunt you and protect it so very well done by them you definitely did a great job though of stopping it down and i'm pretty sure casanova would agree um snowy you, you were the the guy in charge today for uh for the eighth what's your thoughts on the match overall and obviously commiserations i it was a real back and forth match we couldn't call it we we uh, stopped at about the 40 minute mark and tried to make a call of, of, um, of who was going to win. And, and I sucked out. I went to Switzerland and just said, look, the only winners are the people watching right now because we were learning so much and enjoying so much of the gameplay. What was your thoughts overall on the match? Man, um, we, like you mentioned, we're super new, but we've been trying to go against whoever is in front of us. This this plan played extremely well, extremely disciplined, just like uh, Price said. Um, but they're... they're I just feel like regardless, their armor is going to keep them in the fight. Your armor crews are great, Cass, and they're great, 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 great. Um, and really controlled the map. I mean, there was a couple of times where I was trying, when you guys took took our uh, middle point, I was trying to establish a blue line, but you guys kept like, always two tanks there. So we couldn't, put, I, I wasn't wanting to push my armor up just to get slaughtered. And it was, it was like a big chess game, it felt like. I mean, every little thing that I maybe exploited, you guys could counter and then Vice versa, it was just a good chess match, and then just going by our scores at the end of the game, you could see that <laughs> you both man were work, putting in work trying to get garrisons to mess up. But um, it was a very good back and forth game. We had a couple of chances we didn't exploit on that we're going to learn from for next week. But, um, but yeah, solid, really good game from both both sides, I think. But, I yeah. just want to butt in and commend eight for your infantry dedication in trying to take out Vled's tank. The amount of uh, infantry that you guys threw at that tank that Vled was literally outside of his tank fighting off is incredible. You guys still did everything you could, you could to take out their armor and kudos to you guys. That was, that was an incredible uh, fight back that you kept trying to do though. So yeah, we uh, we did say that uh, during the match that it wasn't a case of that you know the eighth 
weren't dealing with the the armor you were throwing everything at them but i think you know credit to nine may they just defended those tanks so well so um casanova did, did you have oh sorry i i'll throw it to you I was just going to say on the, on the comment of armor and the eighth and, and ninth. Um, at the start, we did notice that um, that actually Vled um, Mini seventy six was taken out by that Panther, um, which led to eighth cap in that point. Um, you know, so that was early in the match. So I was just wondering, um, from Vled's point of view, what sort of was going through your mind or what happened there? Because you know the Panther rolled up, it was badly damaged. Um, already, and all it required was one shot. And I just noticed you guys, you, you spun your turret. It looks like you maybe rushed it a bit and hit the tracks. Um, obviously, you recovered well and performed amazingly the rest of the game. But what was going through your head when that sort of happened um, at the start? I um, was really disappointed because my gunner uh, loaded uh, high explosive, and because of it, oh. we didn't oh, no. uh, that explains it. Yeah, we thought you might have just missed the shot or just, yeah, but that, that would explain. Yep. That makes sense. Yeah. That's unlucky, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah we're unlucky. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll throw it to Casanova. Cass, anything you want to say to uh, to the 8th for uh, for putting on a show against you guys? Oh, I want, to, I also want to say a huge thanks to the organizations, uh, guys who made Summit, uh, your team who cast this game and uh, I want to say a great thanks for AIDS. Uh, I love you guys. Snow, you are my bro. Thank you very much. Aww. Your poster Aww. for this game, your poster is uh, uh, mm, unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know the name. I have some, I have some unbelievable. Uh, thank you for the game, guys. Awesome. That's, uh, it's so good to hear two teams, you know, with, with respect for each other at the end of it. And, uh, yeah, we've. Uh, I think we've been pretty lucky here at uh, the Lads Let Loose. Guys, wouldn't you agree? We've uh, we've had a, a watched an incredible game, and uh, yeah, got to talk to some absolute legends uh, that we hope to see more of uh, along the way. Yeah, you guys just made a name for yourselves, both clans, uh, and we want to see you two fight each other again. I'd commentate that for eight or nine hours and, and enjoy every step of the way. Lasso, I'd like a signed print sent to me, please, so I can stick it up uh, on my wall, mate. Um, but, yeah, all of you, Price, Snow, Casanova, Shelmy and Vled, uh, all of you, you had an absolutely fan, uh, fantastic match. We really appreciate it. It's a great first match for us to stream as the broadcast partners of Summit Edition 3. So thank you to every single one of you. Shell, is there anything that you want to say to these guys before we wrap up? Definitely agree. Uh, you guys both put up an incredible fight. Eight, the pressure was still on, even though you guys just lost the cap race, but you still did an amazing job. You still put that pressure on. Nine May, holy crap. Vled, you, tank, poster, signed. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, and Audi? Yeah, look, unreal. Um, you know, over in Oz, we had to get up at 4.30 for this match, and, you know, you've made it worth it. It was it was um unreal game, and, look, I can't wait to see the rematch whenever it inevitably happens. Um, and, look, I'm, yeah, both teams did a great job, and I hope you both make it into Summit. And, uh, yeah, thanks for it. Reed, um, before Crispy wraps up, I'm just going to say something now for our audience that are watching. Um, just remember, this is our first uh, live international broadcast. We've done it at a local level in Australia and New Zealand. But um, if you have feedback that you'd like to offer us, please leave it in the comments and make it constructive. Uh, and we'll happily uh, engage with that. But uh, it's only going to get better from here. And, and that's hard to believe because it was a fantastic match to watch so thank you again to both sides and crispy you can take us out yeah well said frankie and as frank said hopefully it's only going to get better next time i'll uh, remember to unmute my mic when i do the introduction but um from all of us here at Laz that loose uh, thanks for watching and uh, we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next one cheers yeah i appreciate you guys bro.